Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for joining me for another hobby talk. It's me, Northern Exile, and we're going to be going on about 30k today. Really, 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 really big stuff. Been waiting to talk about this for quite a while. But first of all, if you want some cool deals on your next hobby purchase, please go to the link below. I'm getting uh, partnered with Composite Games, a very, 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 very cool store here in England. So if you're in the UK and you need some hobby, you need some model, you need some bits, go down to uh, Composite Games down below. They do a blanket 20% off most of their models, and with the code Northern Exile that you see down below, not only do you get an extra 5% off, which is 25% off overall, which is half of the GW company discount, needless to say, you're also supporting the channel, because yeah, every little bit that you do with that discount code goes towards prizes that I can get for the channel, as well as my own models, if I ever need to get something for the Astral Blades going forward. So, thank you very much for supporting the channel, and have a lovely video. Let's crack on with it, shall we, before we, uh, you know, time is money, as they say. Alright, so, first of all, wanted to just discuss a few things. Um, I was actually uh, scripting this video over the weekend, and I thought, oh, I'll record it on Monday, you know, only for uh, the Outer Circle to do a very similar video <laughs> and literally upload it on Monday. So I thought, okay, well, that gives me that I can, I can have a, an extra day off, and I can, you know, finish my script, and I can come to it on, on uh, Tuesday and work in some counterpoints to some very, very interesting points that he made in his video. I will link that video down in the description below so you can go and check that out too because I think he makes some really, really cool content. And I think a lot of the points he make he makes are quite salient, right? Um, unlike him, I tend to stutter a lot. So if you'd like not stuttering, that is also a good channel to go and check out if you want, want similar content that doesn't trip over his fucking words every five minutes. So, this video is mainly a 40k player's perspective on the coming 30k releases. We all know that the Horus Heresy box set is on its way now. And yes, I will be discussing the price in the video as we go forwards. And the likely influx of new players into the very protected Horus Heresy era, area of our great hobby. Now, first of all, I think um, one thing that... Outer Circle did quite well is that he gave context for why it's such a protected part of the hobby and I'm going to do similar in this video here so if you've already watched his video feel free to skip forward like five or ten minutes because I'm going to go over the history of uh, 30k and why it came about and why people went over there in the first place because uh, I was actually at the company for certain parts of this story and it was very interesting to see and I want to bring my own perspective to it so first of all What's the difference between 30k in its, percep in its perception and 40k in its perception? Um, I know Outer Circle said the other day that 40k is very much a game, all sort of like backgammon, you know what I mean? It's sort of a, it's throwing armies onto the tabletop and seeing what happens. It's more, mm, not so much casual, but it's very much uh, designed for modern day video gamers, okay? It's based on, on the current meta. It has constantly shifting and changing rules that ensure people will always chase the meta without really focusing on the wider narrative of what's going on. In 40k, and I've come across this quite a lot myself, you very rarely get people who stand there at a table and say, well, why are these armies fighting? It, I, need, I need this to make sense for me. Why are these armies fighting so I can get into the game? I need to do that myself, which is why I was, I've been thinking for a long time of getting into 30k. Um, I just don't really... The reason why I'm not into 30k is I don't really like 7th edition. Um, I was never a huge fan of it. I'm not a huge fan of weapon skill and ballistic skill, the the the, the, the graphs and things like that, and, or the way the armor penetration works, and, and I'm just a, not a huge fan of it. Um, don't like templates either. You know, it's just one of those things. I love the models. I love the time period. And controversially, and I know people are going to hate me for this, but if... But if Horus Heresy went a bit more like 8th edition, I would be like, oh, I guess I'll get Horus Heresy then. I guess I'll, you know. Um, and just for your information, I'm probably the kind of guy that 30k players want to play 30k. Because I'm very narrative focused. I'd want my army to be exactly as it is in the Horus Heresy. I want to recreate battles from the Horus Heresy. And I want us to explore the this narrative that we love so much through our models on the tabletop, right? So I'm probably the kind of guy who, who they'd want in the in the hobby. The horrible thing is, I wouldn't mind if it went a bit more like 8th edition, because there are lots of things about 8th edition that I quite like. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I look at it as the, the quote-unquote best edition. I know I'm going to get pillared, pillared for that. 
and I don't mind because you know I I really like Eighth Edition. I really enjoyed it. Ninth Edition, they've Games Workshop have done what they typically do and taken a really good thing and made it very overly complicated and ruined it for everybody. But anyway, let's let's pull it back into to 40k. 40k as a perception with other hobby gamers. Um, you do see a lot of tournament level lists. You do see a lot of people who are winning the game for the sake of winning a game. Uh, Magic the Gathering, for instance, has a lot more in common with 40k than it does with 30k. So the Horus Heresy is, I'll get into that in a second, but the Horus Heresy is more of a uh, an Anorax game, whereas 40k is very much a uh, meta-chasing build you know, pe people say, a lot of people say in 40k, I'm running this, uh, or I'm running that. People don't normally say that in 30k. They say, I oh, I've got this, and, and I, I what I like about I've got this Mastodon, and what I like about it is in this part of this novel, it does this really cool thing where it nearly impales a Primarch, and I always thought that was really cool, so I wanted it in my list. That's the kind of thing that a 30k play will say. Whereas a 40k play will say... I'm running a Mastodon because it's got a really good uh, points to, to output ratio. And when I was running the numbers, blah, 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 right? That's the kind of thing that I thought that the normal 40k player will say. So, does that mean that I think every 40k player is like this? No. Does it mean that 30k players think that every 40k player is like this? No. As I've just told you, I'm a 40k player and I'm not like this. But I will concede the point that there are a lot of 40k players who are like this there is no smoke without fire right similarly no smoke without fire let's turn this uh, gaze round to 30k on their players so 30k and i don't think people will mind me saying this and i apologies to outer circle i know we're of a similar age so disqualify yourself from this bit but the 30k game is for old school nerds right it's your dad's favorite tabletop war game if your dad is into a tabletop war game, he's probably into 30k, if it's a sci-fi based war, war game. Because it is a game for anoraks. It's more narrative driven. It's all about celebrating the time and place that is the Horus Heresy. You're reenacting battles and key moments, and why you're fighting in the narrative means a lot to both players. Um, the game is a, is a lot more even in terms of balance too. Because everybody has basically the same the same core rules as in the legions, okay? Um, so those are the two types of games that we're looking at for for um, phrasing uh, or, or perspective as we go into the rest of the video, okay? All right. So gatekeeping with skills. This is something that I hear thrown around a lot uh, against the 30k community by 40k players, and again. I always say this, there's there's no smoke without fire. I used to run a Thursday night club, which I'll get into a little bit later on, where it was strictly Horus Heresy only. Um, I had to keep this secret from head office, because if they found out that I was doing this, then I would be reprimanded, or maybe sacked. Because you weren't really meant to play Horus Heresy in stores, in Games Workshop stores. Uh, no idea why, we were still selling Prospero and Kelth at that stage. So I have no idea why, but that's just how it was. Um... Yeah, they only wanted 40k played in the stores, but on, on a Thursday night, we, I gave a space over to these guys, and they would they would get they would reward my doing that with with their patronage when they were getting things like Calth and Prospero, and if they needed like a a, a, a Mark III ar armor, they would come to my store and get it from my store rather than the local hobby store, which was very nice considering I didn't I wasn't allowed to give them my models at 20% off like most hobby stores are allowed to do. So <clears throat> here is the thing. And I wanted to pick out a quote directly from Outer Circle's video, which is why I, I postponed making this one, because I wanted to react to some of his some of his things. And this is a direct quote from the video that I, I, I'm completely behind. Um, gatekeeping with skills. And in regards to that, he says, Encourage people, but don't do it at the expense of somebody else's hobby. That is exactly my own feeling towards gatekeeping, quote-unquote. It's not gatekeeping. If you're holding people to a certain standard within the hobby, whether it be painting or knowing your rules or res uh, treating the game world with respect and not trying to introduce furries and all other sort of, sort of nonsense to it, right? And on this one, I would say, yes, if somebody comes into your 30k game with Primaris Base Marines, you have all of the right to say, look, man, that's not what I'm in the hobby for. I'm not in the hobby to, to, to just throw out the law. 
I only want to play people who have law based armies. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? That's not gatekeeping. That's holding your, your own enjoyment of the hobby to a certain standard. Now, encouragement is the key phrase here, though, right? But I do feel like you need to let people find their feet in the hobby, even if it takes years. Just don't play that person if, if their skill level at a certain thing or their wants and needs and desires in the hobby bother you. Just don't play that person, right? They will rapidly run out of people to play and they will either leave or they will adapt. Another thing that was that has been said by a lot of 30k players and I'm including my own friends in this and, and different um, forums that I've been on, things like that, and even in my own Discord server, is they say things like, praise for mediocrity or bad models is not gatekeeping, right? But, you know, it, it, it is not gatekeeping. So, it's, um, how do I put it? So, praising somebody's models when they're mediocre or badly put together models, right? That doesn't, they say that doesn't do anybody any favours, right? And, and so that's not, that's not, when, when, when we say to them, look, this isn't built right or this isn't painted right, that's not gatekeeping, we're trying to encourage people. Well, I understand that point of view completely, but who decides where this line is drawn? Because I know full well that if you look at the Astral Blades video, there'll be a lot of people on there who are saying, well, those models aren't very well painted, right? There will be. I think they're okay. I think they're tabletop standard. That's all I was going for. But there will be people who say, no, 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 no. They're not very well painted. This is wrong. That's wrong. You know, the, the feathering isn't done right on the sword or this and that. And, you know, I don't know why you've done this there, this there. So where do we draw this line of, of what's mediocre and what isn't? Because as far as we know, this person might not be very artistic, but has given it a go anyway. And we'll get reasonably better, but we'll never be top, top standard, top tier in, in terms of painting. Okay. So I think it's a very dangerous precedent to set, to say, look, we're not gatekeeping if we say that your models aren't very good, or we say that your models need to be painted in a certain way, or that they need to be put together in a certain way. Um, obviously, if someone's just slapped a load of paint on there and hasn't put any effort into it, or if someone just turns up with, you know, undercoated ar an, an undercoated army and no other paint is on it, yes, okay, gatekeep away at that point, because at, the, at that stage you're holding somebody accountable for their lack of effort, and the hobby doesn't mean as much to them as it does to you. Whilst a lot of people say that's very elitist in the attitude that you're going on with, it's still very important to me to keep the hobby to a certain standard of passion. Because if you have people coming in there and just throwing armies down on the tabletop, that's not really what Horus Heresy is all about. And so, again, I'm 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 freely admit I'm moderate in most things. I try to see both sides of the argument, and that's what I'm doing here. You know, we need to be very, very, very aware, though, that we need to be doing this on a case-by-case -case basis. If a guy is coming in with his Primaris Marines and he, he's thrown a few Legion bits on there and said that, you know, these are my Iron Hands, well, that's a load of nonsense, isn't it, right? You feel free to say to that guy, look, I'm, I'm not playing you. That's not a 30k army. Away you go. But if somebody comes in and, and, it, and they've given painting their Imperial Fist an honest try and they don't look that great... And they've been doing the hobby for a few years, but they just say, listen, this is just my my uh, skill level and hobby, and I'm comfortable with my models. I really like them. That's not the time to, to gatekeep somebody. That's not the time to say, well, these aren't good enough. Listen, we all have different levels of skill, and some of them just aren't very artistically motivated or even artistically talented, right? So we need to be very careful of where we're drawing that line when it comes to gatekeeping. That was my only point on that one. So my two main points are up the way in which we're going to frame this argument. I'm going to take a swig of my tea, which is a signature of all of my videos, and then we'll get back to the rest of the video. Fun fact, I was going to get an editor, and I still am going to get one. Um, but for videos that are later on in, in the series of these videos, when I'm cutting and splicing different things together. But I've actually been told that, that the tea breaks are kind of a signature thing now, so I shouldn't take them out. So... Fuck it, they're staying in. Um, so, the story of 30k. Let's get into the story of how 30k came about. How the Horus Heresy came about in the in the in the hobby itself. Um, we're going to start with the. With, there are two main migrations of 40k players from 40k to 30k, and we're going to cover both of them because in the second one, that's where I come in. Right. So, migration one. So 2013 turned a lot of people away from 40k. 
right? The balance in that and the actual um, edition was not very well done. Tau and other armies were running away with many tournaments. Um, there were certain times where I'd go into a games workshop and people would put down a Tau army, and the other person would just say, "Look, man, do you need?" And I've never seen this before, right? But people would say, "Do you need to play that list?" Because I'm just not going to play you if you're going to play that list. If that's happening in a war on four thousand, it happened to the end towards the end of seventh edition two, which we'll get into in a minute. But um, when that happens, your game is not just poorly balanced; it's a poor game at that stage. You know, Th that's a marked example, anyway. But many people at this time, when the first Horus Heresy book came out, um, many people migrated over to thirty k from forty k because at this time. And 30k and 40k shared a lot of the same rules. But 30k was a lot more balanced. Especially Chaos players. Because Chaos players were treated very, very, very poorly in 2013. They were at the bottom of most of the meta lists. They, they, li they literally couldn't buy wins to save their lives most of the time. Because the models were so underpowered. And they were hit very hard with the Codex creep in that edition. And so the level playing field of 30k was a big selling point for them and so a lot of them migrated a few friends of mine too stopped playing 40k went over to 30k and started playing uh, uh, pre-heresy chaos and you know um, I've got two friends who play Sons of Horus who were so happy that they had you know the, these new models to go and play with and they, they could go and do their own thing I got I got into 30k a little bit at that stage uh, but didn't dabble in it too much I didn't, didn't have very much money at that stage um, <clears throat> but yeah that was the big exciting thing, right? It was the new new kid on the block. And things kind of leveled out after that, you know, because Horus Heresy was being, shall we say, supported. Every six or so months, there'd be a new book coming out, which is pretty cool. Uh, but it was its own niche thing, and it was treated that way. People went over there, and, and we kind of forgot about them. They were over there doing their own thing in their own little group, and that was fine. The problem started with migration number two, and this is where I come in. So when I started working for the company, when I started working for Games Workshop, I, I started around about the time that Betrayal at Kalth and the Burning of Prospero came out. So they, this is the, the, the next big push of Horus Heresy. All of a sudden, it was very, very feasible for someone to just pick up one box set and immediately have a very decent force of Horus Heresy models. Uh, both Kalth and Prospero were really good sets for starting your army because... Because they're all both, because they're, they're, it's a legion against a legion, if I wanted to do, say, Imperial Fists, I could buy uh, Prospero, or, or, or Kalth would probably be the better one. I could buy Betrayal at Kalth and combine both the armies in the set to be one single legion, and I've got a full legion army there, ready to go. All I've got to do is add a few vehicles and maybe a, maybe a Primarch, which you don't see very much of, by the way. You know, I've, I've seen that brought up a few times as well. You don't see anywhere near as many Primarchs as, 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 as you're led to believe in 30k. Because they're very expensive, and they're not that good. But um, in terms of, of, of your Legion, you could go and buy Betrayal at Kalth, and then add a few uh, like a few tanks to it, maybe a Dreadnought, maybe a specific unit from Forge World. So if you've got Emperor's Children, Pal Palatine Guard, and Palatine Swords, things like that, no problem. You've got your full Legion army there ready to go. Um, so that for the first time, the barrier to entry for Horus Heresy was brought way down. Still way over expensive for what it was, but you could get all your stuff in one or two boxes, which was not the case up until this point. So, a lot of 40k players flock again from the end of 7th edition to 30k. So the end of 7th edition, and I've talked about this quite a lot, was my least favourite time in the hobby as a gamer um, I didn't like the game at that stage I thought it was very poorly balanced I thought detachments and formations were the most broken needlessly destructive thing to be introduced into the hobby into the game at that time they didn't need to come about they were only brought about to sell certain combinations of models that weren't selling very well and I didn't appreciate it even as a staffer working for games workshop and the fact I had to stand there and try and um, justify this choice to people put a real sour taste in my mouth which is why I'm not a big fan of that of that time period at all going forwards 
and I'll be honest with you, I started a, a small uh, word bearers force at this time, uh, a loyalist word bearers force. Thank you very much. Uh huh. And um, so yeah, I started a small word bearers force, and I I loved 30k. I couldn't play it because I was always working, and I couldn't play it in the store. But I loved. I've still got it uh, put away somewhere. I loved my small my small word bearers force because no one plays word bearers because Logar sucks. But I didn't give a shit because I, I don't I don't really mind not having a Primark around because I don't find Primarks that interesting. They're interesting to read about, but when, whenever they come into a novel, I'm sort of like, uh, you know, show me the Marines. What are they doing? Show me the normal people. What are they doing? This is really cool, right? So. This is, this is my journey in, in Horus Heresy. The big migration that I saw, a lot of people in the store stopped turning up. And thankfully, this wasn't my store at the time. But a lot of the golden oldies, that I used to call them, a lot of the guys were in their 30s or older, just stopped coming in. You know, they, they would come in and pick up their mail orders of Prospero and Kalth when we'd run out of them. But they, but they wouldn't come in for anything else. You know, or if they needed a Mark III set of armor or they needed Mark IV they'd come in pick those up and leave because they were going to local stores and they were playing 30k because at that stage what 30k was what horus heresy was was a more balanced seventh edition that's literally what it was that's it it was just a more balanced seventh edition and if you liked space marines as most people in the hobby do that was the game for you at this stage so the problem is the original 30k players who left in Migration 1 in 2013, they wanted to get away from the mindset of many many in 40k at that time. The mindset that we've already covered before, the more gamey, you know, um, video game based, meta based list building that, you know, what was happening in 40k at the time. Here's the problem though with that statement. I don't see the two player bases, even at this time, as being that different in practice. Okay, but this is only from my own experience, so please feel free to disregard this completely. Okay, but I felt that many 30k players who left in Migration 1 became very insular in their groups and they defended 30k as their thing, quote unquote. So they would hold many folks to standards of behavior, um, but that's not gatekeeping, that's completely fine, right? They would say that people are, uh, but Saying that people are migrating to your game because it's good and that's a bad thing, however, is gatekeeping. Okay? I saw this quite a lot. This attitude, this prevailing attitude of, well, the more popular this gets, the more Games Workshop are going to want to try and change it, the more people are going to try and, and introduce things that are, into, or are in 40k that we don't like. And that, to me, is kind of gatekeeping, dude. Like, I can't say it's not. Like, I can't, I've got to call it like a sit. Holding folks to standard of behavior is not gatekeeping, but crying that people are migrating to your game because it's good, that is. That is. That is you're, you're becoming a victim of your own success instead of embracing it. I know that with success, sometimes comes change, okay? But to me, at the time, 30k has just as many power gamers from my own experience on a Thursday night. But that 40k did, right? So on a Thursday night, there were so many tablings that I, I would see on a Thursday night where, where, where players brought kind of, not broken combinations, but through their own uh, knowledge of the game and through their own uh, way that they can... It's, like, it's kind of like having an engine in a car that only you know how to get the most out of. Through your skill as a driver and through your skill as an engineer, you're able to eke out every single bit of performance out of that car. And whilst it's very lovely to see, and, and I applaud you on your skill level, the sheer amount of tablings that I saw from, from if you were somebody who came into 30k and you didn't know every single rule that was going on in, in, that, in, in, in the books at that stage, and you're just coming in to find your feet, there was no mercy in 30k at all. Like, like, like the like the veterans would take you to school. There was kind of like, there was a wrestler once back in the day, Segway, called um, Hardcore Holly or Bob Holly, and he hated rookies, and he was a veteran, and he would just beat the living shit out of them to teach them, you know, teach them the ropes. And that's, I saw that every single Thursday night. Somebody new would come in with their Imperial Fists or with their Night Lords or whatever, and would put them down on the tabletop and get an absolute shooing 
from everybody there. Like, everybody would be like, yeah, I'll play you, I'll play you, yeah, I'll play you. And every single week they would turn up and they would get their shit pushed in by these veterans because they know every single rule. They can eco, they can eco every single bit of performance. <clears throat> because, quite frankly, you need to put effort into 30k to get good at 30k because the the changes of balance are not as wildly swinging as 40k is. Okay, it's not so easy to find the the one size fits all meta. In 30k as it is in 40k. But that doesn't mean you're not a power gamer. That's the thing. Just because you've put in a lot of time becoming very skilled as a, at a game. It doesn't mean you're not a power gamer. Because I know this because there were quite a lot of lads who were very, very, very skilled at 30k. Who would turn up to my hobby nights. Who would downgrade themselves for the sake of the narrative. They would say, hey... I don't want to bring th this combination that I know I can annihilate people with because I know how to use it like the back of my hand. I want to bring different units because this person wants to play Istvan 3. Okay, we'll do Istvan 3. And I'm going to play as the Loyalist, so I can't take this and that and the other. So let's have a really good narrative game. And that person would still have an amazing game because he knows all of the rules. But invariably, he would lose just as many games as he wins because he, he, he is what I term as the true 30k chad the true 30k player is the player who respects the law who respects his opponent's wishes in the game or what he, what they want to play but i'm telling you now i saw just as many power gamers who put serious effort into knowing the rules and by the way power gamer to me isn't really derogatory right it means that either you found something in the meta because you put the effort in or you become so good at the game with a certain combination of units and rules that people just can't get anywhere near you. That's not a bad thing. That's showing a lot of skill. But it's still power gaming. Okay? So for me at the time, 30k had just as many power gamers from my own experience. Okay? And in flux in other power gamers, yeah, that's not great. That's not great. Considering the 30k style of power... Uh, sorry, the 40k style of power gaming was very different to the 30k style of power gaming. And I saw a lot of 40k players... And I'm gonna, this is going to back up my point as well from before, who would join that Thursday night group, right? And they would try to do the same thing that they do in 40k, where they find a list that they think is completely broken, and then try and run it and beat everybody in the store. And the more skilled 30k players would tear them limb from limb. Like, literally pull their force apart and annihilate it piecemeal. Because they were that skilled, they were that good at the game. And we, we never saw those players again. They would take their models and they would go somewhere else. So, so 30k at that stage, to me, was self-policing in the best way. And this is how we need to keep 30k to me. That's how you self-police. Okay? You become... You, you do what 30k players always do. You become so skilled at the game that other people just have to adapt and get better, <laughs> get better at the game. They can't rely on these combinations that get them out of jail when they're playing 40k, for instance. Okay? So moving on from there, that was the second migration, and that that's what the point that I wanted to make when uh, when the, the new migrations are coming in, because we're about to see the third migration of 40k players to 30k, and I have a feeling this might be the biggest one yet. So let's talk about the future of 30k. Let's talk about the future of the Horus Heresy moving forwards. So now, bear in mind, I only know. The following points from conversations that I've had of people who work for for GW and what they think is going to be happening with with with, with 30k going forwards. Um, this isn't anything that's been confirmed, so you know, take it with a pinch of salt, if you will. But it does look like 30k Horus Heresy will be getting the 40k treatment, even if the rules remain the same at their core. Okay, so what I mean by that is codexes for different legions instead of the big books. Okay. Uh, th that looks the most likely way that we're going to be seeing things from here on out, all right? And um, we're sure to see a huge diversifying of army rosters moving forwards. So we're getting more 40k style. We may even be seeing Eldar creep into, you know, um, things the things that are in the Horus Heresy. We'll definitely should be seeing some Imperial Army and things like that, or even Fallen Imperial Army as well, uh, moving forwards. The one thing I wanted to bring up is the muted price at GW right now for the 
core starter box set, the new core starter box set of Horus Heresy, is £240. Just going to let that sink in for a sec. That is absolutely absurd. £240 is an absurd price tag for a starter box set, regardless of what's in the box. I don't want to hear anybody say to me, Oh, but Northern Exile, you get this in the box, you get that in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah mate. GW decides how much those models cost. Right? They're worthless outside of the hobby. They're not worth anything. They decide how much those models cost. So they're not giving you a good deal. So, so get that out of your head straight away. £240 is an absurd price point for a starter box set. It just is. And before anybody says it's not a, it is a starter box set. It is the, the, this is the new Horus Heresy box set that's coming out, right? And if you're going to start Horus Heresy, this is the box set the Games Workshop will point you towards. So this is the starter box set, the new one that's coming out for Horus Heresy, right? It's likely that GW are trying to attract new people from 40k whilst the, or appealing to the older, generally better off financially, 40k slash 30k, uh, sorry, Forge World slash 30k player base, okay? They're trying to have their cake and eat it. They're trying to bring people across from 40k, but still appeal to the quote-unquote elitist 30k players, Forge World style players, who are able to spend extortionate amounts of money on their models. £240 for a starter box set is extortionate and greedy. I'll leave that there. That's just my opinion on the new price on the new pricing, you know. And for me, no. <laughs> just no. No. Absolutely not. Ridiculous. Anyway, moving on. Many in the 30k fandom worry that this will only lead to a huge influx of power gaming 40k gamers into their side of the hobby, and perhaps they're right, they're, they're, they're right to think so. And I can only say that this, whilst it's, whilst it's absurd and extortionate and greedy, this might be Games Workshop's, shall we say, safety valve, is that they are pricing out many 40k players by making this box at £240. Most 40k players are younger than 30k players. I don't think that's a controversial thing to say. Most of them are student age or even teenagers. I have no problem saying that, even though I'm a 40k player myself. And so they're financially less better off than many people who are in full-time employment, i.e. 30k players who have left university and are now adults where they're surrounded by other blokes who get together to play some to play some 30k, right? Now that is a grand sweeping statement, and feel free to disregard that as, as you will. But I generally do think, I genuinely do think that this 240 pound price point is a way for them to keep that pressure valve of, well, the people who go on eBay and they buy full armies for the sake of the current meta, they will they will be priced out of 30k by price points like this. Perhaps. That's just speculation on my point, but I think that might be one of the reasons why it's so bloody expensive. But here's the thing. For people who are worried about new people coming into 30k. If you want Games Workshop to focus on giving you good models and support, you need to admit that the game needs to make money. And it needs to make a lot of money to keep GW support strong. It would be absolutely shameful, in my opinion, for GW to look at 40k success and not want that for 30k too. What I mean by that is, some of 30k players are some of the most salt of the earth, really cool guys who play our hobby. And they deserve just as much diversity in their model set. They deserve so just as much support as Games Workshop gives to 40k. But it needs to be the right kind of support. It's all about, do you trust Games Workshop? I mean, I was just... You know, silly question. But do you just do you, do you trust Games Workshop to, shall we say, give you support and keep your hobby the way that it is, rather than ruining ruining its balance for the sake of more money from the casual crowd? I'm not so sure. I've given you the ideal world solution, okay, and that is bring the price point down, but keep Horus Heresy just the way that it is for the people who have made it what it is. That's what I would do. 
the rules themselves should turn off a lot of people who want to come in and just ruin the balance. Okay, there aren't that many ways to power game in the traditional sense in 30k. It is a rather mostly balanced game. Sometimes you can get wacky lists, yes, but that happens in every game. Not just 40k, not just 30k, not even games workshop games. It happens in every game. But the Legion versus Legion style does keep things to the point where player skill and knowing your rules counts for a lot more than it does in Warhammer Thor 40,000, which is one of the main pulling points of 30k to older players who want to invest the time to learning the rules. The one thing that does worry me, and even though I, I've said, listen, for me, this is this is why I'm a centrist, because I, I, I pride myself in seeing both sides of the argument. For me, I would love 30k to go more towards 8th edition, 40k, um, because then I've got the best of both worlds. I've got my lovely legions, and I've got that lovely lore and background stuff. And I've got rules that I really like to play with combined into one thing. So that's what I would like, right? But I know that that wouldn't be right for everybody else who loves the rules as they are right now. That wouldn't be fair on them. Because they've made 30k what it is. The very reason why we still have 30k, why we still have Horus Heresy, is people who've put up with the fact that they've been neglected and pushed to the side and not given any support... And they've had to organise their own tournaments, their own places to go and play their their, their, their toy soldiers, right? It would be wrong of me to expect that to, to, to happen. And it shouldn't happen, right? It sh the, the Horus Heresy should stay 7th edition. It should be... It should have its own thing. It should be warped and changed in, only, in an evolution rather than a revolution. You know, rules should be made a lot more clarity-based. We, we should be trimming down a lot of the fat... Okay, and perhaps adding in more diversity of units and unit combinations. Bring in the Imperial Army. Bring in the Eldar. People want to use Xenos, right? In the in the in that timeline, they can do. You know, vastly expand some of the chaos that that, that are, are are running around because we are getting to the towards the Siege of Terror in the, well, we're in the Siege of Terror in the current uh, Warhammer in the current Horus Heresy books. So for me, new chaos, possessed things like that would be great to see. Those are the kinds of things that need to happen to Horus Heresy going forwards. Not a 40 k ifying of the rules. Okay? But, let's say that Games Workshop turn out to do Games Workshop things and that we get the worst case scenario. Here is my advice to 30k players. Remember, lads and ladies... You are playing with toy soldiers. There is nothing wrong and there's nothing stopping you from using old rules. Pick and choose your opponents. The game is the game. You choose what people are a part of it with the attitude of the general community that should, should, that should then rub off on those coming in. A lot of 30k... The strength of 30k is its insularity, right? It is in the fact that they've been so neglected that they have their own communities and their own people who want to, who want to, who love the game as it is, and want to see things added to it. Well, if you want that, if the new rules come out and they're very 40k based, then use 30k rules. Use the old ones, right? Don't don't allow your game to be corrupted. Simply play the rules that you want to play. Because you've been doing that anyway. Because you've been neglecting and left on your own for, for the longest for the longest period of time. Okay. In terms of people, uh, in terms of an influx of people of bad actors into your into your um, into your hobby. Only when it is clear that those coming in are bad for your group and hobby should they be challenged to be better or leave. Stopping people at the gate is kind of ignorant and childish, and I know I will see that. As we go into the, the future of 30k, I know when, when the new box set comes out, a lot of 30k players will say, Well, you know, you know, you know, here here is your quiz, here is your test. What how much do you know about the Horus Heresy? If you don't if you don't get nine out of ten, you're not allowed to be here. Think shit like that, right? People who say I'm not playing your list because you've got too many of this type of tank, and you know, that's not technically right, and it wouldn't be, you know, it's not, not right in terms of the law, so your list sucks. Right? People like that, yeah, go fuck yourself. You know, like, that, I hate using the word gatekeeping, that is, you're stopping people at the gate, you're not even allowing them to come in, right? People are innocent until proven guilty. If they come in and they're bad actors, then challenge them to be better, or leave, and don't get opponents. 
Simple. Self-police. Very simple, right? But stopping people coming in before they've even started is the wrong way to go completely, all right? So, last two things I wanted to talk about. For those protecting 30k, okay, as I just said, you're playing with toy soldiers, lads. You're not defending the Somme, okay? Lighten up a bit and be welcoming to folks who actually want to join in. If someone is a bad if someone is a bad actor in your hobby, then simply walk away from them or challenge them. If someone is power gaming or trying to use 40k units in 30k, politely refuse to play them and explain why. Okay? If they get out their, their primarch means and say that and tell you that they're legionaries, politely explain why you refuse to play them. Literally. That's not what our hobby's about, dude. Yeah, you got the wrong end of the stick here. Hey, do you know what would be good to do? If you're a 30k player and you've got 3,000 points of, of Imperial Fists and, you know, and you see a, a, another army there that somebody isn't using, you can always say, look, how, how about this, man? Uh, Dave over there has his Word Bearers and I've got Imperial Fists. Why don't, why don't you play with the Word Bearers and we'll show you how the game works, right? We'll, we'll, show, we'll show you how we're meant to play the game. It's different to 40k, but you'll love it. I, I swear to you, you will love it. Trust me, you're here for the right reasons. You're going to love it. If he then refuses, that's up to him or her, right? But nine times out of ten, I'm telling you now, that person will go, okay, yeah, I, I want to see what this is like because that person's using his 40k units because he hasn't got any, any 30k units. So playing with some 30k units would be pretty cool, okay? That's the way to do it because then you're outing him as a bad actor if he says, no, actually, I'm not doing that. I want to play my 40k not my 40k models. Well, mate... I'm sorry, but that's like me turning up to a 40k game with a fucking titan and slamming it down and saying, well, I'm just playing with this because technically it's in the rules, so fuck you, I'm going to play with it, right? It's not, that's not, that's not, ent you're not entering the hobby in good faith at that stage, okay? Right. 30k is an old school game where the authenticity of armies is massive, right? But here's the important rub. People can't learn without being taught. You are the older custodians of our hobby if you're playing in 30k. Right? So you need to make sure that you're acting as such. You're the older custodians. When people come in and they want to play 30k, it's up to you to nurture that love inside of them. That sounded a bit wrong, but you know what I mean. Right? It's up to you to say, look, this is what's really cool about our hobby. This is why it's better than 40k. This is why. We love the stories. We love the background. We love the lore. We love having these legions that are on the tabletop with their own stories and backgrounds and company sigils and things like that. That's the, that's the thing you want to ignite in these people. Okay? Stopping them at the door and giving them a questionnaire about what Horace Heresy books they've read isn't the way to go about it. <clears throat> so, in the interest of fairness and balance, I have something to say to those entering into 30k for the first time from, for, from Warhammer 40,000. And I'll put this in block capitals in my notes. Know what you are getting into. Okay? You're playing a game with old school anoraks. These are guys who have likely left 40k because it is so focused on the meta. You may come across idiots, just like in 40k, but you're still walking into something that is different to 40k. Never be afraid to ask, all right? Enter into this new area of the hobby with respect, open eyes and ears, and a genuine, gleeful interest, and you will find friends very quickly. Anyone who rejects you for having such an attitude does not deserve to be in the hobby in the first place, right? So if you go into 30k with with a respectful outlook and you, you're... You're going into it in good faith. You want to learn the rules. You want to learn the law. And you've had your interest ignited by reading Horace Rising or something. That's the kind. Those are the kind of people that, that 30k players will welcome with open arms. <clears throat> if you see it as the new cool thing that you want to play your 40k models in, probably not the best attitude to go into something that people have fought to keep going for so long. All right? So those are my thoughts on the upcoming release of, of the Horus Heresy, of which I will be partaking if I can get a good deal, because I'm not paying £240 for it. Go fuck yourself. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. Again, if you are wanting to support the channel, head down to the uh, description down below 
and go and get your models from Composite Games if you're in the UK. I am working on more um, partnerships for international people, people in the United States and, and Australia who are abused and they don't get deals like this. But for UK people, you lucky, lucky, lucky sods, Composite Games is there for you. 20% off almost all Games Workshop stock in the store. And if you use Northern Exile in the code that is down there below in the description, you will get an extra 5% off. That's 25% off. And all of that goes to help the channel going forward. So, love your long time. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you soon. Alright guys, have a good one.